Is that rubbish truck playing songs? Quite handsome cars these XC90s, um, don't mind them at all actually. Oh, so cold! Ooh, uh, what's this microphone like outside? It's got a dead kitten on it, uh, which isn't a very nice name when you've just bought a, a new live kitten, but it should stop wind noise. Uh, this of course is the pre-wash stage, already done the wheels, uh, but they're coming off uh, once it's back in the unit as well. Um, I'm going to rinse this off now if you want to know more about washing a car. Look back at one of the other vlogs, I think in vlog 2 or 3 maybe, I went through a bit more about washing the car. <laughs> uh, right, back in the booth, uh, a little bit warmer than outside. Drying towels, not too sure if I've covered this before. Uh, very quickly, this is the G Technic MF4 drying towel, and I use a couple of these. There we go. Um, just in case you didn't know what drying the car looked like. Uh, yeah, I tend to use a couple of these to dry the car, very absorbent, you can wring them out. I actually prefer these now to the slightly longer fibre ones. Uh, so, highly recommend these, about £10 from G Technic website. And now, just checking over the paint on the Volvo, and as you can see, there's some swirl marks on the front already. Weird, they only kind of appear on the front a couple of foot of the bonnet and as you move back they disappear around there and then the rest of the bonnet's not too bad so some uh, technician maybe when they were doing the PDI had his greasy mix all over the front of it and then wiped it off leaving these swell marks. These will be buffed out, there's some more all around the car as well um, and then it will be, oh there's some more down that side as well look, actually quite a few. So those all need taken out before the crystal serum can be applied. So it's going to be the rest of today, checking around the paint and polishing. Um, maybe get a coat of the crystal serum on. See, this is where I can't turn my screen. There we go. Um, and if I hadn't have turned the screen, I wouldn't have known it was zoomed in. Um, oh, let's take this mic out as well. Right, we're now back on the standard mic temporarily. Let me know uh, what you think, because uh, like I say, I can always send this back uh, to Amazon. Yeah, rest of the day polishing this, then try and get some crystal serum on it, maybe tonight, uh, and then we can start the EXO tomorrow. Wheels are going to come off, and the interior is going to be treated with the G Technic I1 and L1. Right, we're well past the end of the day. It's about seven, half seven, and I've been banging my head off against this car a little bit. These are some more marks. Uh, it's kind of covered in it all over. Some jobs are a little bit more straightforward. Uh, this one should have been straightforward, but obviously it's covered in marks like this. <laughs> Thursday evening, it really is Thursday this time. I know yesterday I said it was Thursday, but it was actually Wednesday. Um, I have now finished the Crystal Serum and EXO on the Volvo, uh, looking nice and shiny. Took quite a lot of polishing because there was quite a few swell marks, but happily those have all come out and the paint is all now protected. 
What I'm now doing is I've got the wheels off because the customer requested the uh, wheel off package for this um, so that we can coat the inside of the, um, of the wheel barrels uh, and the wheel faces as well. So front wheel's been done. Okay, I've got the rear wheel off down here, uh, putting some coatings on. Now, uh, yesterday's video uh, might have gone on a bit with the questions. I'll try and shorten them down in this one. Uh, had quite a good fun with the holiday montage though. That was um, the beginning of our holiday in Hong Kong. We were only there for four days and it was a bit of a kind of surreal experience because we were jet lagged. We'd literally just moved house as well. We, we put the last box into the uh, house that we'd bought on the day that we flew out. Uh, so it was all kind of a bit crazy and it was weird. We'd, I don't know if you've ever been somewhere and kind of been telling yourself you have to enjoy this place because you're only here for a short time. Um, but not actually in, enjoying it so much. Maybe that I think that's how we felt in Hong Kong. Um, maybe a great place, but didn't really do it for us. Uh, next up, we went to Vietnam though. What a stunning, amazing, friendly place. Uh, so I'll include some, um, some clips, uh, some time lapses, some footage from uh, Vietnam. And if you ever want to go there, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, really great place. So we've already done the front wheel, got the wheel off the back, uh, and it needs cleaning a bit more. Even though I cleaned it outside, these satin wheels uh, the satin wheel really clings onto the dirt so we're going to give it another clean up uh, and then put the ceiling on. This isn't good, I've got three batteries, this is the second one and the battery light's flashing already. Uh, right. Last wheel is um, just drying before I put the sealant onto it, so I'm going to give the arch a clean up. And I clean these outside, so I'm just going to give them a light spray over with a cleaner, wipe them and then apply some dressing. And it's just these little finishing touches that make the car look, look like it's been detailed. I know this says tyres on it, this is Car Pro Pearl and this is a bottle I mixed up for Auto Store to use and their bottle was full, mine was not. I'll we'll spray this onto the arch, it dries down nicely, doesn't leave a slick greasy finish, uh, just leaves a nice black well protected finish. <laughs> FYI, this is the internal mic when I'm standing behind the camera. Just before I show you the final car, the interior has been cleaned and protected with the G-Technic range. I2 to clean and then L1 and I1 to protect the leather and fabrics from spillages and the leather from dye transfer. recommend snow foaming it's okay if you've got a snow foam canister it's a good way of getting the detergent on the car uh, almost as effective is just using a pump up sprayer like I sometimes use and um, what I would say is if it's a hot day using the foam canister is going to get text mute uh, using a foam canister is going to get a lot more product on the car a lot quicker and so you don't risk it drying out quite as quickly Ian Cross, uh, what car do you drive and how often do you clean it? I had a Golf GTI, had to sell it when we bought this house sadly. Uh, I'll buy another one one day because they're fantastic cars even though everyone at work hates Golfs. Yeah, I used to clean it, uh, not that regularly because I didn't used to drive it that much. I only probably did five or 6,000 miles a year and luckily I had a garage at the old place. Don't have a garage at this place so I would be cleaning it a lot more if I had one. Uh, but I use the van and I'm a bit lazy with it because I don't go to customers that much anymore. Um, I just let it get dirty so maybe once a week I'll give it a clean. If I know I'm going to a customer's I'll tend to wash it the night before so I can arrive and the van looks presentable. 
Uh, Captain Birdie, do you use a compressor? And if so, which one? I do, it's one that Autostore kindly provided. I don't know the name of it, but it's I think a 50 liter one, um, not very high capacity, but it does the job. Duke, which paint coating do you advise for the advanced home detailer? Crystal Serum Light. Um, there's a video on how to apply it. In fact, I will link it below and at the end of this video. Um, very easy to use if you're in the right environment, I should say. Um, outside, you're gonna have uh, a difficulty trying to see where the smears are maybe. Um, but yeah, it's a brilliant product and easy enough that you'll be able to get the hang of it at home. Uh, G Ward 135, when starting out, how easy or difficult was it to balance the cost of products and materials with income from the work you do? Not easy at all. Detailing is by no means a cheap uh, hobby or job. My brother, for instance, is a window cleaner and his overheads are like way down here. Detailing your overheads are not even in the frame. They're like way up here. Um, hundreds and hundreds of pounds I can spend a month on different detailing products and equipment. Um, so yeah, it is very difficult. Um, what I'd say is buy good and buy wants. Um, plenty of times I've bought cheap polishers or cheap lights and they broke quite quickly. Uh, so it's a false economy. Just save up that little bit more, get decent products, flex and repairs, make really good products that are good for day-to-day um, -day use. The DAS6 and other prosumer or consumer products, um, they're good, but they're not gonna stand up to day-to-day -day use and so they're gonna break a lot quicker. Another question he had, when did you decide or get the chance to purchase a unit for your work? Again, extremely lucky. I'm gonna do a whole video on Auto Store and how amazing they are um, because they let me work there um, as much as I need for a very affordable rate. And, um, and yeah, I, I would have tried to get a unit by myself, um, but the costs are quite prohibitive for detailing because um, detailing is not the highest turnover job. You kind of need another service to support the cost of a unit, I think, uh, whether you're selling products or whether there's two detailers sharing the same unit. Just detailing for one person um, can be hit or miss whether it's worth having a unit yourself. Uh, Miles Drive, I see a lot of your comments. Thank you for watching regularly. Um, what are Cambridge Autogleam's plans for 2017? Uh, good question. Uh, work a bit less. Uh, end of last year was crazy, um, partly because I was panicking about getting a lot of work in before I went on holiday. Uh, yeah, it was like very late evenings, weekends. I know that probably sounds like most people's lives, but um, I like a slightly easier life. So yeah, try not to work weekends. Try to book in maybe one less job for every three jobs or something, just so I give myself a bit of space if a job runs over or if auto store needs a car doing last minute. Um, yeah, try and work a bit less and maybe look for someone else to work alongside me. I have been getting emails from people um, asking about apprenticeship positions. Thank you for those. I haven't replied to any of them and I'm really sorry about that. In fact, I'm gonna try and sit down this afternoon and reply to some of you, uh, but I'm just not quite ready to take anyone on at the moment. Some O's, Danex, OO. Um, a video on G-Technic for wheels, please. Um, can you use CSL on wheels? Uh, yeah, I'll do a video on both. G-Technic do a wheel cleaner that they don't really call a wheel cleaner. I think it's called Iron Out. That's sort of their wheel cleaner. Um, a slightly better product that I found is the Koch Chemi Felgen Blitz. Uh, that's their version of the iron dissolving chemical. Um, but I'll do a video on both of those. And yeah, you can put CSL on wheels. I'd put Exo on top of it or wipe C2 over it afterwards. I'd do that on C5 anyway. compare and contrast the major coatings. Yeah, I will do a video on that, like I said earlier. I'll do it on my bonnet or I'll do it on a scrap bonnet, section it up, put the different coatings onto different sections and then show them over time how they've lasted. Uh, same person, Michael, is it better to spray down a car first or go straight to foam? Uh, if you can, try and leave it dry because the detergent will stick to the dry paint uh, for longer and do a better job of, um, 
of uh, dissolving the dirt, of uh, softening it. Um, if you put it onto a wet car, it's not the end of the world. And always remember to try and wash the car in the shade or on a cloudy day. There's a couple I'm not going to read because uh, they're from my work colleagues and they're disgusting. Uh, but Simon and Stu, you should know better, you're grown men. To Tony Core, what brand is that blue inspection lamp you use? It was a product that Polish Blish commissioned. It's by Clue Light. Uh, they no longer sell it. Basically, you can get that light, but it's got a different LED and a different uh, lens on it. So it, it kind of gives a slightly different pattern. That one that they bought a batch of that was specifically for detailing, I think are sold out now, which is a shame because it was quite good. In fact, it's really good for spotting the coatings. Not so great for spotting swirls, and I've got a load of scan grip stuff on the way, uh, which I'll do a video of. And I suggest if you're after a swell spotting light, have a look at scan grip's website. I will put the link below. Julian van der Velde, what's the most difficult paint to work on and the easiest? Uh, most difficult, uh, it all varies. Like the Audi SQ5, again, I keep going back to that video because it was such a traumatic experience. Um, that was way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, generally they're not too bad, Audis, uh, Porsche, BMW, anything German's okay to work on because it's hard enough that it will take a decent polishing uh, but not too hard that uh, you can't polish anything else. Uh, easiest, I don't know, nothing's easy, everything always takes longer than I think it's going to take. Uh, I'll let you know when I do an easy job. Uh, total Random Gaming, hi, hi. Uh, Sean, can you explain what you are looking for while polishing paint? that's your paint, that's your panel, and you're shining, this isn't going to work with a fan. I'll try and explain it in another video what you're actually looking for, but you're not looking at where the light shines, you're looking at the reflection of the light. Um, I will do it, in fact, in my next video. Uh, so, cool. Right, thanks for watching. It's been a slightly boring one, I know. Uh, I will hopefully have spliced in some more interesting footage uh, along the way.